On this edition of Check 6 Aviation, we're finishing up the vertical stabilizer. Welcome back to Check 6 Aviation, my friend. I am so glad to, that you're back and watching this next installment of this adventure where we're building an RV-10. Now, if you have been following along at all, you would have seen us building our vertical stabilizer, which is section six of the plans for the Vans Aircraft RV-10, you know, Vans Aircraft. And uh, yeah, so um, about that though, I in, in the video editing process, I may have left out a few parts, uh, maybe skipped around. And when I was putting the footage together for this video, I'm like, Wait a minute, uh, I've already covered this in previous videos, so forgive me my friends. Now, a little bit of a housekeeping note here. Um, going forward after, uh, when I'm building the, the next section, uh, actually not, not the next section, which is the rudder, that's those, those videos or video, hopefully I can get it going in, in all in one shot. I don't think so but it won't be a three video series like this has turned out to be because um, the rudder is only about, oh, I, I wanna say the vertical stabilizer takes maybe about uh, eight hours to build roughly where the rudder took uh, an estimated about five hours total time you know, building. So probably two videos at the most, uh, but don't hold me to, don't hold my feet to the fire on that. And now, a little housekeeping. After conducting a poll, it's clear that a 30 plus minute video is a bit much for a good portion of viewers. I'm committed to doing a better job in this area and will do my best to keep future content around 20 minutes or so. With that said, it helps the channel grow if videos are viewed all the way through. The YouTube algorithm seems to rank watch time higher than most other factors. Speaking of the YouTube algorithm, Commenting on videos definitely helps the channel grow since YouTube sees the engagement and says this should be seen by more people. Smashing that like button below also works much the same way. It tells YouTube that they need to suggest the video to more people. So be sure to subscribe to, to our channel and to change the notification bell to show all so you will see any new videos we published. Also, please consider doing all three of these right now, even if it's just a comment to say where you're watching from and saying hello. And now, let's build our Vans Aircraft RV-10. Anywho, let's get back at it. If you don't know what the vertical stabilizer is, well, this might give you a hint. So it is the next day, or pretty close to it. Uh, getting all of this pretty well scuffed up. There's a couple of areas that I really want to go ahead and scuff up a little bit more. Um, they have been pre-coated, uh, pre but notice I am not touching with my bare hands, even though you may think that your hands are clean. There's still oils, natural oils uh, that are on your hands and that will affect the finish of everything. So I am going, I'm, I'm wearing gloves. These are brand new gloves. And I am going to put a little bit more scuff in a few of the areas here. And then we are going to drop the drop down the room and mix up a batch of primer fun 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 as you can see here let's just put it this way if this were the interior cell of a cylinder wall on an engine yeah i'm really happy with the amount of uh, scuffing i've got here comes down the the paint booth inside that I rigged up and here we go with you know drying out everything 
you have pre-coat has already been done, primer coming up. You mix it to as a one-to-one -one ratio. Uh, this primer is a little bit out of date, as a matter of fact, uh, it, it, but it's still good to use though, because as long as you're not, yeah, yeah, at least that's what I'm told. It, I'm told it's still good to use. So you know what? <laughs> this stuff ain't cheap. <coughs> so yeah, uh, a good paint mixer from Lowe's on the, the primer. On, on the base and you mix it as a one-to-one -one ratio and let it sit for 30 minutes while it cures that's the reason why I've got the phone out I'm using the phone as a stopwatch and we are good to go many hours later so I'm back here obviously in the shop uh, looking things over from last night's prime session and for the most part we're uh it's okay there's a few other few minor touch-ups that i need to make like uh there's some areas here uh that i need to touch up uh, you know like right back here i can see some bare metal that um i didn't get a really good spray on so i'll probably mix up maybe a couple ounces uh, or, or maybe four, yeah, I'll, I'll just mix up a couple ounces because the areas that I need to touch up are very minor. So I don't need to do anything major. Uh, but the main spar, ready to go. Uh, the top spar, or I forget what I call this, but uh, the, the top rib, ready to go. Um, I do need to touch up a couple, of, you know, maybe one area in here on the forward spar of the vertical stabilizer. And that, you know, that'll be, that'll be it. The nice thing about this primer is that about 15, 20 minutes, you can handle it. So I don't really, I can just go ahead and set it down here on the, on the, the workbench and boom. Uh, I did get a really nice coat on the inside of the skin, so I'm happy about that. So what we're going to do now, before we get into the primer, is we are going to go ahead and do the doubler situation with the main spar. The doubler's ready to go. So let's get to it. A quick check of the plans and we get to work on building the yeah the, the first part of the skin. Here I am, I'm putting in some doublers for the hinge brackets, the, the top hinge bracket in this case, getting the yeah the thickness of the rivet you know, the rivet squeezer set so that we are good to go. Top rudder hinge brackets going into place. And then I work, start working on the doubler. And this is a little tricky because there are a couple of, of places that are, you know, that they say do not rivet. And you'll see me put some painter's tape right there over the holes just to make sure that I don't do anything with them, especially the ones on the uh, upper portion of the doubler because yeah that's the reason why i've tried getting this far two times this is like the third time that i'm trying to build this vertical stabilizer main spar and so far so good but there are a couple of rivets that i'm not quite happy with in this in this step so i do end up drilling those out and when you see me kind of tapping on the rivet, it's trying to get it down to where they set just right, and we're trying to re-squeeze them a little bit. And I've I have figured out that the quality of your rivet, you know, once it's squeezed, is dependent on how stable you can get the rivet squeezer. So yeah, there is that, and but we do get it done. And we move on to the next step. Huh. 
Okay, so I discovered that I missed, I was supposed to do some countersinking down here and missed it. Oops. And uh, so that's okay. It's never too late. It is better to miss it now or miss it that when I did. On this particular step, that is. Um, let's see, because according to the plans, uh, let's see, okay, I'm not riveting these, but, and I don't think I'm even counter, no, I'm not countersinking these. To the best of my knowledge, I am not. So I will leave this tape in place. I'm not riveting these because it does say leave open. However, okay, so I countersunk these two holes. I was supposed to countersink these two holes too. Okay, so the difference is that this is for the, the rear rudder hinge. So these are larger holes. And then this is a number 30 hole that will get... Well, I don't know if I leave... I don't know if I need to countersink this at all. I do know I need to countersink the, this, these two, these two, these two. Ah, okay, so this is a four uh, 426, 4-6. These three are 426, 4-7s, which makes sense because it's got to go through the, um, the spark caps. But leave open. These two holes are left alone as far as riveting goes. If you see me drilling out and kind of you know, putting in a rivet just to check it, uh, actually I'm not really drilling out, but I am countersinking, uh, and putting in a rivet to check the you know, how flush it sits, well, that's just part of the process. So the reason why you want to do that is because you, want, you don't want to be able to feel the difference in the where that rivet sits. You want it to be as flush as possible. And again, here I am checking to, you know, checking the against the the parts list because this is my very first dealing with um, with hardware. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, yeah, um, you know, consulting the hardware manual and the books. Uh, but ultimately, uh, after reaching out to Vans and um, you know, getting some advice on hardware identification because there's a lot of screws and I've never had to really deal with this before. Uh, there's a website that I've been uh, that I've been using to get dimensions from.
and I will post a link for that website down below. It's even got pictures. And also, I have secured off of Amazon a, uh, a device that will help me def yeah, identify what the what the screw is you know it'll it'll, it'll take measurements and uh it's basically oh, i don't want to say it, it's a it's a checker of sorts but it kind of is it was it wasn't very much expensive at all it was like maybe oh i want to say about 10 bucks so not bad not bad at all but here you've got the rudder the bottom rudder hinge bracket going in and this is the first time that I am dealing with hardware on the RV-10. So, yeah, um, but I did end up, uh, yeah, see, this is what I was talking about before. Uh, this is one of those sections where uh, I've got, yeah, where it's kind of out of sync, but not really. Um, I missed a section, I think, uh, in the course, but this is a very exciting step because this is where the skeleton is going in for the very first time. It's getting built, and uh, you want to do this in a specific order, and the, the order is all laid out in the plans. And here comes the skin. And let me tell you, this was a little challenging. And I wanted to get the uh, get you know, an alternate view going in you know, to do this, but I don't know what I did with that footage. <laughs> so forgive me, folks. Bear with me. But we did get this done. The hardest part was getting the uh, getting the nose in place. Believe it or not, that was the hardest part. Uh, but you definitely do want to get uh you know click on the nose first and then work your way back and there you go you see right there in the center that's where i've you know, where i kind of dented the skin a little bit i will go ahead and fill that in with bondo either that or i will let my paint shop guys do that because well they are the experts i might take a crack at it i don't know let me see how adventurous i get but here comes the mushroom set and you, you really do have to reach in to get this far and you know, get this part. Uh, I did end up doing a few, uh, doing a couple of things uh, out of sync, out of step, and had to drill out a bunch of rivets. Let me tell you, when you're first getting started on a project like this, drilling out rivets sounds like a daunting task. But after you do it a few hundred times or a few, well, ten, a few, about 20 to 50 times, it becomes second nature. Yeah, I have no fears about drilling out rivets now. Even the the 420, uh, the 470s, yeah, which is the, the rounded mushroom head that go on the inside interior spaces on the on the ribs and stuff. But uh, yeah, it's it's kind of a contortion act at this point because you gotta really reach up there with one hand with the bucking bar. And you see right there, I, I goofed. And yeah, I've got, yeah, I was drilling out some rivets. But yeah, you've gotta really reach up there uh, with the bucking bar and then kind of switch between the bucking bar and the rivet checker to see if you've got the rivet set right. Yeah, because uh, I was drilling out those rivets because I had forgotten that are that I needed to rivet that line there that goes uh, vertically and I needed the extra room to get you know to be able to lift that that flap up so yeah that's one of those things where you just kind of learn as you go but thankfully there is so much support in this community that I I sincerely believe that anyone can build an airplane. And if you do decide that you want to tackle a project like this, just go ahead and uh, you know, use my builder number down below when uh, you order your kit or when uh, you know, the Vans will go ahead and send me a hundred bucks 
uh, as a thank you and it does not cost you anything additional and it is a way to support the channel and it, any support for the channel whether it is by ordering a kit and uh, using me as a referral or even just giving a thumbs up a comment down below a subscribe and setting that notification bell to all that is all very appreciated all right we are her back out here my work shirt but uh anyway so riveting the whole thing showing that was just a, i felt was a little bit too repetitive so i went ahead and i got everything done except for the the back the the main spar uh and as the plants do say, because you need to stick your arm up underneath the skin with a bucking bar and kind of contort with the uh, with the the rivet gun to rivet the the middle the middle rivets. Um, and I did make a boo boo and rivet a few a few rivets that I wasn't supposed to at that time. I realized it before it was too late. Actually, at that point, it was already too late. But let's just say that it's fixed. It's looking good. I'm happy with the result. Let's get this part in. Let's finish this thing. It's at this portion of the video that I really should warn everyone that there are certain parts of, you know, certain holes in the bottom of the skin that you do not rivet and pay attention to the the uh, the rivet call outs the you know, page that you see on the left side of the screen there where i just put the hammer and that will tell you what what uh what holes are not supposed to be dimpled so do not rivet those because those will be taken care of in a later step when you attach the uh, the the fairing to the backside of the RV-10, uh, you know, kind of the, the fillet, uh, I don't know what you call it, but it, 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 there's something that you have to do with those holes. So you see uh, closer to the screen there, uh, the, bo uh, the, the bottom of the screen, there, is a, there are some holes er that are not riveted, and that is by design. That is me following the plants. In fact, I goofed and dimpled the bottom rib by mistake but I corrected those dimples because you can go ahead and undimple them to a certain degree uh, I used a punch and a hammer to kind of correct that that situation that's it for this video folks my friend Thank you for watching so far. Like I said before, hit that like button. Leave a comment down below. Is this video the right, the right length for you? Uh, do you have a question? Even if it's just to say hello, that helps. It does, it does help the channel get out there. It gets people, you know, it helps the channel to get noticed and also spreads the word. Until next time, remember this time and always peace. And remember, check your six.